Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my brand new Loki deleted scenes video. They revealed a whole bunch of deleted scenes from episode 5 and from some earlier episodes involving characters from episode 5. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Careful for spoilers from Loki episode 5 and everything else that's happened on the show so far if you haven't been watching the episodes. But the past few days you probably saw the Loki writers and producers have been revealing a bunch of deleted scenes, the biggest one being a deleted scene with Loki versus Frog Thor. So in the actual episode we saw there was a version of Frog Thor in a jar labeled T365 as they're sort of going down into the bunker. You see him trapped between layers of dirt trying to escape from his little jar. You see a full size version of Mjolnir in a whole bunch of lunch trays. But that was meant to be a reference to the events of Thor issue 365 which was the big Frog Thor story this whole easter egg is based on and the basis of Thor's story from Thor Ragnarok about Loki turning him into a frog. That was the whole story that Matt Damon's fake Loki was telling during the play at the beginning of the movie. I'm a trickster. Yes. So mischievous. Yes. Sorry about that time I turned you into a frog. It was a wonderful joke. It was indeed hilarious. The joke with Frog Thor in the Void is that it's a version of Thor from those events when they were younger where Loki never changed him back into his regular form but instead apparently trapped him in a jar and then they both got pruned by the TVA and sent to the Void. The Loki deleted scene with Frog Thor versus Thor actually was supposed to take place during episode 1 if you can believe it. According to the producers they filmed a scene where Mobius is hauling Loki into the time theater and showing him all the footage from the Marvel movies but it winds up being a montage of failure of him getting his ass kicked in every single time by the Avengers, by Thor and he's just using it to make fun of him on purpose trying to get him to break and lash out so that he can suss out what this Loki variant is all about. The deleted scene of Loki versus Frog Thor was going to happen during the humiliation montage of him showing him all those scenes and it was going to be another example of him always losing no matter what he did as per Mobius' speech. Like what's going on? Are you the god of getting your ass kicked? It was basically tiny frog Thor pummeling full size Loki with a tiny frog sized Mjolnir just kicking his ass up and down but it's like a little tiny frog with a tiny hammer doing it to a normal sized Tom Hiddleston Loki. So it was basically Mobius showing us the fans what actually wound up happening during Matt Damon Loki's story. Like another version of the D.B. Cooper type of scene which was meant to be an example of an adventure that the regular Loki had before he was killed in Avengers Infinity War before this Loki variant was created. They didn't say exactly when the frog Thor scene was supposed to happen in their timeline just at some point before the events of the first Thor film. But they had Tom Hiddleston performing his part of the scene separately like on his own with some motion capture references and then spliced it together with the Frog Thor part because Frog Thor is a pure special effect just like Alligator Loki. So you have to imagine Tom Hiddleston faking getting pummeled by a tiny little frog and a tiny little hammer. As awesome as that sounds the reason they said that they deleted the Frog Thor scene is because the early part of this episode 1 with them in the time theater felt like it was dragging on in the edit bay and they knew that they were going to do the Frog Thor easter egg later in the void during episode 5 so they just opted to delete it but the other really cool detail about Frog Thor that the director just revealed is that the version that we see in the series really is Chris Hemsworth recording new dialogue for the scene. This is the director Kate Heron talking about it on the podcast For All Nerds. So technically you can consider that to be a Chris Hemsworth Thor cameo scene even though it's not exactly what you would expect from a Chris Hemsworth Thor cameo. I think the cooler thing about this though is that any other regular director or producer wouldn't have bothered to try and get Chris Hemsworth back just to record a bunch of grunts for a frog trying to get out of a jar. So you have to imagine them pitching it to Chris Hemsworth like we're going to bring you back to do this special little scene. It's going to be great but it's going to be on a planet full of Lokis and get this you're going to be Frog Thor. You son of a bitch. I'm in. And they didn't pay Chris Hemsworth to do that either. He just came back for free to be a total dude just helping them out and because it's just voiceover grunting it was really easy for him to do that remotely in Australia where he was while they were filming Loki in the UK because this was all happening during the lockdown period last year. I wasn't really thinking about Chris Hemsworth when I watched this scene the first time but if you rewatch it now and you listen you know that it's Chris Hemsworth it does sound a little bit like Chris Hemsworth grunts. The next big deleted scene they just revealed from episode 5 actually was happening at the end of the episode during the big final battle so it was going to be them fighting Eliath but during the deleted scene all of the Loki variants that were left in the void were going to rally and help our Loki and Sylvie fight off Eliath and it was going to be like an all Loki version of the Avengers Assemble scene from Avengers Endgame like Loki's Assemble which sounds hilarious and amazing at the same time. 
But the reason they said that that didn't make it into the final episode is because they didn't want it to diminish the triumph of our Loki learning to enchant on the fly and the two of them defeating a Lyoth by themselves, realizing that they could be much more powerful than anyone gives Loki's credit for. That's what his little speech about classic Loki was when he was creating that perfect illusion of his version of Asgard down to the trees and the cracks in the streets. He even added the detail of the lightning bolt as a reference to his version of Thor. And our Loki was like, we're stronger than people give us credit for. So as cool as the Loki's assemble scene would have been, it would have kind of destroyed the weight of that moment. The head of production that designed the look of the void with all the Easter eggs and all the cool stuff all over the place said that originally it was also going to be way weirder inside the void. I'm just going to read his quote about it. He said, we were trying to find moments to infuse the void with surrealism. So that was the point of the giant heads that they were walking around all the time. And also the little void creatures that look like little peacocks. So if it wasn't clear, those weren't meant to be any specific reference. I was trying to find a comic book reference and a couple people thought that they might have been dodos or something like that. But the way the production designer explains it, they were just meant to be nonsense animals that weren't a direct reference to any specific comic book thing. So he goes on to say, originally at some point I was proposing a far more Salvador Dali-esque, Dada-esque version of the void and it evolved over time. But those little bird creatures and heads made it through from the Dada-esque version of the English Moors version of the void. If you're not familiar with Salvador Dali, he was this really famous Spanish surrealist artist renowned for his strange art pieces and paintings involving melting clocks, distorted landscapes, Dadaism which was this really big European avant-garde art movement from the early 20th century that focused on nonsense and irrationality. So originally they were just going to have way more nonsense happening in the void and it was going to look way trippier. You can kind of tell they're going for a lot of deep cuts with their production design, like especially inside the timekeeper's room when they go inside there, it looks kind of like they walk into an MC Escher painting with the staircases are just going all over the place. So I wouldn't be surprised if they also do something really crazy with the interior of the Black Citadel at the actual end of time where the main villain has been hiding this whole time. We've seen a little bit inside that Black Castle like Loki walking through the hallways that seem like endless hallways just the way they're designed with the arches here. You have the living room here even if you look on the floor here too in the high resolution version of this like zoom and enhance the symbol on the floor kind of seems like some of the symbols that are at the TVA. Which I think is just meant to back up the idea that the person who's been living here this whole time at the end of time was actually responsible for the original creation of the TVA as they've been theorizing this whole time on the show. The other big deleted scene that they've revealed is actually at the very beginning of the show at the very beginning of episode one. It's that Avengers Endgame scene. The director Kate Heron said that because they were building the series off of that moment where Loki escapes in Avengers Endgame, they basically went into the archives where they store all the footage that they filmed and they were just petabytes of footage that they didn't wind up using for Avengers Endgame. Just a whole bunch of really cool deleted scenes and alternate versions of scenes that we actually saw in the movie. So this whole opening scene with Loki is basically part of just an Avengers Endgame deleted scene. This is her quote about that. She says, it was a lot of fun. I mean, what a treat as a director, getting access to the library of the rushes of all these other brilliant filmmakers. So basically they said that they had access to all of the footage from all the Marvel movies that they filmed, but particularly from Avengers Endgame. Then she goes on to say, that was the really fun thing with the opening was getting to show that moment everyone knows so well, but from a completely different POV, just because the Russos shot the scene a couple different ways. So as happened with Falcon and Winter Soldier, with WandaVision, we learn about a lot of deleted scenes after the fact, especially from the finale. So if we learn about any really cool deleted scenes in Loki episode 6 after it airs, I'll do a video for that too. Of all the Marvel Disney Plus series so far, I think the series with the biggest, like the most WTF deleted scenes is still WandaVision because of all the plans that they had for Benedict Cumberbatch. I've already done a number of deleted scene videos for that, so I'll link some of them in the description below because some of them are pretty crazy. But what's going to happen is my full Loki episode 6 finale video will post on Wednesday just like normal. I've got a new Rick and Morty episode 4 video that will post next. So if you have any big questions you want me to include in my bonus videos this week, just let me know in the comments. Everyone click here for my Loki episode 6 finale trailer video and click here for my full Loki episode 5 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight. <laughs>